He'll bite you, so just be careful. Wow. No. Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here. Yes, exactly what you guys see in the title. This dog does bite his owner and tries to bite me several times in this video. This is a young, big, powerful German Shepherd, guys. And the most crucial thing about this entire session is control. She's had to have surgery because this dog is constantly yanking and pulling. There's little to no control. So, so the most important thing about this video, guys, is control. So throughout this session, you guys are gonna see, we're gonna switch up different material. I even switch up shirts a couple times because it's super hot and it's absolutely necessary that we gain control over this dog because she's on the verge of getting rid of the dog and there's absolutely no way this dog would survive in a shelter because of his aggression issues so i hope you guys like this video and if you haven't yet do me a favor right now like this video smash that subscribe button and let's let's, let's just dive right into it guys just take this and then this is going to go around his neck so this is a herm springer right. it's like the top of the line okay. stuff it's going to go here Okay, and it's gonna, so that's what we need on him. Yeah, he's not playing around. He'll bite you, so just be careful. Yeah. All right, here, let me take his leash. Come here, big guy. Come on. Oh, see, that's what he does at home. Okay. Yeah, he's he's very uh, no. very, yeah. Did he bite you? No, he didn't bite me. He's just he's he's you could tell. He's, <laughs> it's not so much dominance. It's more don't touch me. Like it's bratty more than dominant. Bratty. Yeah. You just have to be careful because see how see how he starts to curl his lip and get like don't mess with me. Yeah. That could escalate pretty quickly, actually. Um, because what happens is, is I come down like, so see how he's, yeah. easy buddy. Um, so but from- I don't, I don't let him, I try to, to stop when he does bad behavior. But he just wants to be the dominant one and he knows he's strong as hell. But there's a big difference between trying to stop him and stopping him. Gotcha. You know what I mean? It's I understand easy. fully what you're saying. Yeah. I'm not saying that you've allowed this to happen. I'm just saying whatever we've done throughout the process has, has created this. For, for an example, what you just saw, you're going, what are you doing? And, and, and doing everything that a normal dog owner would do, but it's not working, not working. Right? right? This isn't like, a, the be, as you know, the best prong collar. So we got to set him up with that. Right. But um, yeah, definitely need to get this figured out just because he's super strong. And if somebody were to come over and pet him and like do something like you, you could tell he's, he's giving me that side eye and he's kind of like, don't mess with me. So let me see what we have for different types of prongs to see if we can help him with that. He's just so used to getting away with anything he wants to do. And that's, that's more of the problem. Like see, so see this, this type of thing. What is that? That's, that's a great question. He, he wants to get away. I say, no, he fights me. Right. You try to put a collar on him. He says, no. He growls, he snarls, he bites. He's not, and that, and so there's a lot of complexities going on with this situation with dog behavior. And this is the stuff that I absolutely love. These types of like really tough, tough situations. But anytime you ask him to do something that you don't want him to do, he's gonna fight you about it. Right, right. And his head, he, just, like, just like us, when we say, how do we get a dog to do a certain thing? and then we continue to condition it. We say, if we ask a dog to sit and they sit and we pay him, we're gonna keep paying him. We're gonna condition him. He's done the same thing with, with you and he's doing it, he's trying to do it with me, where he's, he looks, he growls, he snaps, we retrieve. So he knows and he's clicked and he's conditioned us. He goes, if I show my, bare my teeth and I snap, I, and he does, he gets away with it. And you can yell and scream and he's like, I don't care. Right. I, got away, I got what I want. And that's, that's the problem. Uh, let me bring him outside and see how he does without you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just go out to his car area here. And um, I'm gonna try to put the prong on him because right now he doesn't have any control. As you guys can see, um, he's very out of control. 
Um, he's nipped the owner already. He's trying to nip me uh, as well. Um, so he's, he's not, the thing about him is, you know, the whole no bad dogs thing is he's not a bad dog. He's just gotten away with so much. He's used to getting away with this stuff. So you're going to see me talk a lot through this session because I need to break down the entire process of why all this stuff is happening. If it was me and him, and I wasn't trying to, to, to help the owner and, and teach the owner everything and teach you guys at home, this would take probably 15 minutes and it would be over. But I want you guys to really, really know and understand why these things are happening because if I can save a dog's life at home and definitely help this dog here, I wanna teach you guys the process so it's scalable. And of course, the dog owner needs to know why the things are happening, the way that they're happening, as well as how to fix it. So this is gonna be a very educational video for you guys and I hope you like it, but um, this is gonna be a process and we're gonna bring you along the way for the whole thing. So I'm gonna to try to put this prong on uh, by using the car. Sit, buddy. Good job. Good job. No. No. Yeah, so he'll, he's gonna to try to bite me. So let's see if we can get the muzzle on him and try to put the prong on. Come on. I need to give this owner the tools and things that she's gonna need to when she goes home, she can control the dog. Whenever I'm dog training, guys, it's not about me, it's about the dog and the owner. So like I said, I can, I can walk this dog around and do what I want and he's gonna be calm and not come after me, but it's not my goal. My goal is, is to help the dog get over the problems that he's having, as well as give the owner the tools and training that she needs to be successful. Like, a, the large is too big, but a medium, a medium is too tight. Can't win. Okay. So we got the prong on. Good job, buddy. All right, you guys, so we got the Herm Springer 3.0. Um, now we have an opportunity to actually work with the dog and, and gain some control here. Again, guys, like he's not a, he's not a bad dog and he's so bratty because he's gotten away with so much. So we need control and we need discipline, guys. That's what we, hi, buddy. Okay, okay. Good boy. Taylor, just watch him. Man. All right, I'm gonna have you why don't you just go out to your car and hang out for a little bit? Just want to point out something really quick. Uh, the owner just left. So now I'm going to work him on tune-ups, something I do quite often. But this is a uh, Herm, this is a prong collar, but it's not a Herm Springer. So you guys will notice the difference by many different aspects. If it's not a Herm Springer, it's not going to help. If this dog has to pay attention to somebody, his life depends on it. Good. Dex, heel. Yes, good boy. Dex, heel. Yes, good boy. Heel. Good. So what I'm doing, guys, is as soon as I come out and I turn, I'm giving him a verbal cue and I'm saying his name and I'm telling him to heal. So as soon as I do that and he doesn't comply, I, I, I snap the leash and say, hey, pay attention to me. This is exactly what this dog needs. He's gotten, he's gotten away with everything in his life. So I need to make sure that I'm doing my part by saying, okay, buddy, none of that. You're going to start paying attention. Heel, heel, yes, good job. Just like that, guys. Good, Dax, heel, yes, good heel. Sit, yes, buddy, good job. So for the first time, guys, in this session, I'm starting to gain ground, and I'm so grateful for companies like Herm Springer that allow me to do a better job and allow me to use tools that I know that this dog owner is going to need to be successful. Like I said before, guys, the tools that I'm using aren't about me. It's not about me. I could get a slip collar on this dog and it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be a big deal. But with her, she needs more tools. This is a gigantic dog getting away with a lot of stuff. We need certain tools on a dog to control this dog. She's not, she's already had surgeries um, dealing with her, dealing with her joints with this dog and, and it's just, it's just a mess. So she needs the ultimate control. And by doing that, I'm gonna be using the prong collar to get that. And uh, what you guys just saw is directional change with verbal association and verbal compliance. So what happened guys is when I turned and I said, Dax heel, he said, okay. And he turned with me and he turned with me. Why did that happen? Why did he all of a sudden start listening to me? Two things, mom's out of the room, which creates, creates a lot of conflict for the dog because he's insecure with her around. And the Herm Springer 3.0 allowed me to say, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, tap, 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 tap. Constantly like, hey, hey. And then eventually he's like, oh, I get it. If I turn with you, 
and I listen to you, then I'm gonna not get corrected and get punished. And Dax knows the game. He knows that, hey buddy, if you don't pay attention, there's a consequence. Boy. Dax, heal. Good heal. Dax, heal. Yes, buddy, good heal. Good heal. Dax, heal. So one thing I wanna share with you guys, I, I, I get a lot of questions on what are you using for equipment? I'm gonna show you and tell you exactly what I'm using. I'm using my No Bad Dogs Signature Series Dog Training Leash. I'll put all the links in the description below so you guys can get the setup if you need it. I'm also using a safety clip. So a lot of you guys ask me, what is those colorful things on your collars when you're working with the dog? Whenever you're working with any type of training tool, especially the Herm Springers, you wanna make sure that you're using safety clips. This safety clip will go onto your leash and then it'll go onto your flat collar. So if you corrected him and at any time this popped off for whatever reason, you're still gonna have your dog safely. Now the final test guys is gonna be with the dog owner coming back in and seeing what control we have with her in the room. One thing I wanna be clear about this dog is that we're going over the process of how to make things better. I'm not going over the cheap fix it all one hour session of like your dog is fixed. Please don't get, get it twisted. This dog is not fixed. This dog is not fully trained. We are not out of the woods by any means, but we definitely are on the right path. One of the first things this dog owner said to me when she came in is, is this fixable? Is this something that we can do? Is this something that we can get over? And the answer is obviously and clearly yes. We can certainly help with these types of situations. It just takes help. So um, we're gonna continue to work. We're gonna continue to get better. And like I said before, the real test is when the dog owner comes back in. Uh, she's coming in right now, so let's just get into it. So I'm gonna just have you take a seat and just ignore him completely, okay? The real test is gonna be now. Um, he did really, really good with me. Got some good progress. But now I'm gonna start getting to the next phase. Heel. Good. Heel. Good. Heel. Good. Heel. Yes, buddy. Good boy. Heel. Absolutely fantastic. Good boy. Heel. Yes, buddy. Good boy. Good. Well, he knows it now. Before he... He does know it. That took okay, so let me rephrase. He'll do it now. Yeah, he'll do it better now. Yeah. yeah. So like I said in the beginning, there's a big difference between your dog knowing something and doing something. Big difference. Right. Big difference. What I did is I conditioned him on the turning of the heel. So I would come out and I'd say, Dax, heel, and I'd turn. He said, nope, pop. Again, pop. And he goes, Okay, I'm just gonna go with you because it doesn't, it, there's no consequence for that. Yes, good job. And he goes, oh, so it's operant conditioning. So then what we did is we applied it when you came in. Because again, the second phase was distraction. Get close, Dax heel, pop. Good. Now we're gonna test it, okay? So if he's learned something, he'll comply without pressure. Dax heel, yes. Bingo, here we go. Good job, buddy. Good boy. It was absolutely what we wanted to see. If we were to use a harness, it's not gonna work because it's not corrective. He's like, yeah, screw you, I'm pulling, right? We use a flat collar, it's gonna choke him out, do a lot of bad damage on his pressure points and bad for the throat. So the prong collar comes up and distributes that pressure properly. Having the right, it's not just any, it's the Herm Springer collar that actually, it has very rounded edge. It has really high custom German made uh, equipment. I've been using this stuff for the last 10 years and I can tell you there's a significant difference. So when I come out and I say, Dax, we're gonna go this way. And he's like, no, I'm gonna go that way. He gets corrected. Before, with the other prong collar, fighting, uh, habitual barking, showing teeth, no respect. So now that we've, cre look at this. It's wonderful. I mean, what a difference in, in an hour. I'm trying to do a little bit of consequential pressure and leash pressure to tell them, if you don't comply, there is a consequence. Just like any other good parent would do to their child or whatever they're responsible for for, for not compliance, especially with him. I mean, the other thing that you also mentioned in this session was, if we can't control him, I'll have to get rid of him. And it's nothing we want to do. So what, so what we did is I, I went in and I said, hey, here's the deal, bud. When I turn, and when I do stuff, you have to listen. And if you don't, you're gonna get, and then he clicked and he goes, oh, well, okay. And then now I'm able to go to what was magnetically driving him and driving his reactivity through the protection and like crazy anxiety and, 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 and actually work away from you without any pressure. So I went close and I said, hey, come. And he's like, mm, 
correction. And then I went again and I said, hey, come. And he's like, okay. And so my point is, is he's mentally on a better state of mind than he was. So it's not just jerking him around, making him do stuff. It's him actually making the decision through compliance, good boy, to actually listen to me through corrections and using the collar. Good job, buddy. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer the leash to you. And what you're gonna see is he's gonna start getting excited and overly stimulated because of the relationship he has with you. So what you need to do is just work on directional changes back and forth, keeping him on one side, doing the heel like, you, like you've done, going back and forth. So you're gonna say, Dax heel, you're gonna turn. If he doesn't, little pressure. And you need to tune him up a little bit. And don't let him pull you. Don't let him get crazy. We're not using, no, right, no. we're not using treats to lure him around. I'm actually going through and I'm, and I'm being very organic with it to say, this is what we're doing, dude. Right. So that was very good because you're new to like the, the whole, you know, prong collar training and things like that, you're doing it correctly. There's some things that I do want to discuss that we don't want to do with it before you leave. And this is something I go over with all my clients because just like any dog training tool, I can get a harness and mess a dog up. I can get a flat collar or normal collar mess. I can use treats, make a dog fat and obese and not listen to anything and be very bratty. Anything that you can use with an animal, you can use wrong or you can use right. It's, it's how you apply it is what makes it, makes the difference. When you're using the prom, like I've demonstrated in a lot of like tutorials that I've used and you know, cause I'm really passionate about helping people and tools to help people is, is part of the process and we shouldn't be afraid of them if we use them right. But there isn't a lot of uh, content out there for people to go, oh, that's how it's supposed to be used. You see the prong collars hanging down to their chest and not good. So one thing you should never do to a dog when the prong collar is on, you should never give them enough pressure where they're actually coming off the ground. And I know that that sounds crazy, but people just don't know. The prong collar administrated should come in and just snap. And I've made that demonstration many other times. I'm gonna let this play out. I want you guys to just realize. So watch the effective correction I'm about to distribute to him. Hades, heel. 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 Ah. Sit. Heel. So you should never actually pull the dog's weight up off the ground or swing them around. Yeah, you should just give it a quick snap just to say, hey, pay attention. They go, oh, 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 okay. So it's not used to choke at all. It's not a choker. It's an attention getter. Why does it work? Because it has 20 different points of pressure coming up in unity at once and goes, hey, versus one point of pressure with the dog. So it's really snap, release, snap, release, okay? So when you're doing that, that's all it should be. It should never be holding like this and then choking the dog. But like I said, you can do the same exact thing with a flat collar. Put a flat collar on a dog, lift him up. What are you doing? You're, you're choking a dog, you know, whatever. So, so it's all about how you use it. If you give anybody a piece of equipment and they use it wrong and they do damage and they hurt a dog and they, and they do all these n negative and bad things, that's because they're a jerk and they shouldn't be using them. And then I want you to just work on your healing with them, okay? Sit. 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 So, yeah, it's okay. So don't, don't, worry, so, don't worry so much about the sit. Well, I want him to calm down before we leave. Yep, and that's okay. Um, but just like when you ask him to do something, see how you said it like five or six yes. times? Don't do that. Okay. You just ask him, if you, if you want him to do something, you ask him, and then if he knows it and he doesn't listen, just give him a little correction to get him to do it. But right now, I'll just work more on the healing than anything. Heal. Good. So this is much better. Yep. I mean, this is much, much better. Yep. Good. Lots of work to do for sure. All of this behavior was created, right? So it, it kind of got, wor like you said, worse and worse. So remember, when you're asking him to do something, do the best you absolutely can to be conscious of how you're presenting your information to the dog. So when you ask him to do something, so just like with, if I, if I was a, a father and a son, and I said, go to your room, go to your room, go to your room, go to your room, go to your room. It's like, lost the I've lost, everything's diluted. Exactly. What you want is, Go to your room. They go, okay. Instantaneous. Yes. So, because all of the anxiety and the brattiness and all that stuff was created. Because like we talked about the first thing, one of the first things we talked about is you said, 
oh, I tell them to do this and I tell them to do that. And, and like we said, it's like, there's a big difference between asking your dog to doing it and your dog actually doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I told him, hey, why don't you go to the bank, give me a million dollars and come back. I'd say, yeah, my dog, will, my dog knows that, but he won't do it. So then it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? Hey, 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 hey. No, 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 no. So if, if he, wrong? yeah, so again, like you, you said, hey, like probably 10 times. Yeah, don't, so that, but that's what's, here, so let me see him for a second. Yeah, I have to get conditioned you, because I have to break my habits. You have to. That's my problem. It's, it's the only, that's why we have the no bad dogs thing is because this, what, all of this is created. None of this he was born with. He wasn't an eight week old puppy trying to, you know, do all this. He, he was created. Remember, like if you go, he's going to be like, boop, boop, boop. Right. Not going to listen. You got to be very assertive and say, so if, again, if, if you ask him to do something and then he turns around and doesn't do it, don't talk to him about it. Act. Do, dogs don't, you know, they're not like kids. We, I said, that, that, right. that, that, that just, okay. Just say, just, all right, you guys, that's a wrap for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was informative or entertaining or whatever you watch this video for. I hope it was that. I appreciate you guys very much for watching. Thank you so much. If you haven't yet, don't forget on your way out, like this video, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I talk to you next time. Peace. I'm away. I'm away.